What's going on everybody? Jada Black here. I'm back with the, another video. Uh, make sure that you are subscribed to my live stream channel. That link will be in the description box. That's why I live stream at the most. And also like this video as well and share it. Now, this is a video that I've been wanting to make since this story broke. Um, it basically highlights a lot of what I've been saying about black men, especially a lot of these, you know, young black men who basically who are athletes, who have talent. At a certain point, it comes to a time to where they're never really held accountable for their actions, you know, and they believe that they can say and do whatever they want and there's no consequences. No one's there to sort of rein them in, except for their coaches, but for the most part, their coaches only care about them performing well on the field, you know, not necessarily being good men, and, you know, outside of that. You know, some do, but for the most part, they don't. Now, Trevon Boykin <clears throat> pretty much was a good athlete throughout high school, even into college. His college career started um, with him redshirting, and then the next season he had to play because the starting quarterback at the time um, was suspended. TCU had a lot of a lot of issues. Um, there was a point a couple years ago where the head coach of TCU, which is the university that he attends, had to suspend pretty much half of the starters on both sides of the ball. They had to play a lot of freshmen, a lot of backups, because they had to suspend a lot of people. They had they had some kind of issues that were going on there. They had to, they had to suspend a lot of players. They had to kick a lot of players off the team, and they had to start over fresh. He was a part of the group that had to uh, basically stand in for those players. Now, for some background on Trevon, he's 24 years old. He was born August 22nd, 1993, in Mesquite, Texas. That's where he's from. That's actually um, played high school football at West Mesquite. And he played in college, I believe, from 2011, which he went, he redshirted, to 2015. Okay? And then he was an undrafted free agent at quarterback. I'll put links in the description box so y'all can go and get more info on this particular topic. Because I know a lot of y'all don't do your own, don't like do research, but you have to do it in this video. And because of his height, he's only six feet, you know, 215 pounds. You know, he and because he was a bit inconsistent as a quarterback, even though he had a very good uh, junior campaign. Uh, let's see. But his senior year wasn't as good. So he went undrafted. And he ended, he ended up with the Seattle Seahawks, right? Okay. 2016. He still has some issues there. Okay. And he also had issues at TCU as well. On December 31st, 2015, two days prior to the 2016 Alamo Bowl, Boykin uh, had to miss his final game because he was arrested for a bar fight in which he threw a punch at a patrol officer. He was charged with assaulting a public servant, a third degree felony, assigned a $5,000 bond and suspended from the bowl game. Okay, that was his last game ever as a college player. He also was charged with public intoxication and resisting arrest. Boykin played no contest and received a year of probation as part of his probation. He was ordered to attend alcohol awareness sessions and anger management classes. Now, that's going to tie into this video, anger management, because all the way back in two, uh, 2015, they recognized that he had anger issues. OK, he was fined $1,500 in order to undergo eight, 80 hours of community service. OK, now another arrest um, happened after he was in the NFL March 27th 
2017, Boykin was arrested in Dallas, Texas for misdemeanor charges of possession of marijuana and public intoxication. Okay. And that was when his then girlfriend, who was accused of beating up later, ran rammed her car into the side of a bar. And they ended up injuring people. Now he fled from the scene. Okay, this isn't the first time he fled. All right. Now, fast forward to this particular situation. That was just some background. Now, he's not a starter. He, I don't believe he's getting playing time, but he is collecting an NFL check. No, I don't care if you're on the practice squad or you, or you are a starter or a bench player. NFL money is a lot of money, okay? It's still six figures, okay? <clears throat> now, he ends up being accused of beating up his girlfriend, okay? Swollen her face completely up. All because she refused to show him a text message in her phone. Okay. Now, looking at these articles on this particular situation, he vehemently denied this until photos was released and she did an interview. That's when they decided to release him. Relieve him of being on their team. Okay. Now, he's denying it. But looking at her story, even though she could be uh, full of shit too, I kind of believe her because think back now, all the way back to 2015, he had to take anger management courses. Okay. So fast forward to 2017, he is accused of beating up his girlfriend because he was angry that she could be cheating on him. And see, this is where that emotional state comes from. See, a lot of these guys, from the time that they are, you know, um, found out to be great athletes, people tend to kiss up to them, give them a pass, you know, uh, when they do things. And I think Javon Borkin has had that. I don't think he's had the right people around him. I think his parents tell him that whatever they want, you know, he wants to hear because he is an athlete who made it to the NFL. And that is unfortunate, you know. Because what this seems like to me is a, a black man, a young black man who missed an opportunity. Because if you look at the Seahawks team, especially a quarterback, they don't really have much depth behind him. And I believe he was a backup to, he became a backup to um, uh, Russell Wilson. Both of them about the same height, the same weight. They have the same playing style. That's why they brought him in. He could, he was developing into being sort of like, can't think of his name. Yeah, name. Tyrod Taylor. He was he was developing into being a Tyrod Taylor. Tyrod Taylor was about six feet, six feet one. So they they play like similarly. So he was developing into being a similar quarterback. You know, Tyrod Taylor sat behind Joe Flacco for a couple of years before he got an opportunity with the Buffalo Bills. And he made the most of his opportunity and got a big contract. Javon Boykin was on the road to doing the same thing. But Travon Boykin's anger and his low social awareness got him in a situation where he's unemployed and he could be facing really serious charges and looking at these photos it, it, it's not looking good for him okay because in every instance he's flee he's fleeing the scene okay in every instance you know his girlfriend like the, the situation that happened at the bar the reason why she's saying that she rammed her car into the side of a bar was because she said he was choking on her and beating on her. Even though there was really no evidence at the time he had done that to her. But, you know, of course, she's going to say that to make herself look good now. But you look at this situation where they're both in the home. He wants to see who she's talking to on her phone. He thinks she's cheating on him. So he proceeds to choke and beat her up. And I'm looking at these photos of her, man. This, man, he did a number on her. And all because he could not control his emotions and his anger. Okay. And he is still denying it, but lets you know he has no accountability. She's saying that she woke up in a pool of blood and him trying to clean her off because he had beaten her unconscious. When they got, when, you know, he waited a day and took her to the hospital. 
when he got to the hospital, they separated him and her and they started asking questions. What did he do? He fled. This is a guy, this is a young black man, a young man in general who is misguided, who had everything in front of him. He could have been the next Tyrod Taylor, the next undersized black quarterback to be able to lead a team. But he can't because he could not control his emotions. He allowed his emotions to get the better of him. And that's what we see with a lot of these young black men today. They don't know how to control their anger. They're undisciplined. They don't have a lot of social awareness. They live in a bubble. And they think that they can lie and excuse their way out of things. And we don't have that type of leeway um, as people who don't have a talent. You know, he has a talent. So maybe that's why people were able to overlook the things that he had done. But maybe these things didn't manifest until he got older. You know, he was in a in, in, whenever there's a position seemed like whenever there's prosperity, that's when he has his biggest issues. This guy was suspended the last game of the season. His last game ever as a college player because he could not control his anger. Alcohol seemingly involved. Okay. Now, I'm not for vilifying these brothers, but I am for holding these brothers accountable. Okay, because... As a black man, this looks bad upon me too. I can say, well, it ain't got nothing to do with me. Of course it does. It rep what 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 people like Trevon Boykin does, it represents me as well because I'm a black man and people are gonna always view us in the same light. That's why we have to make the best of being able to be logical and sensible and being able to separate ourselves from the people who don't fit who we are even though people are going to judge us the way they want to judge us but at least we can know that we have separated ourselves in a certain different type of category this is why i don't argue with people who say you know what jay you make excuses you you make videos about women you say certain things about them you bash them no i try to separate the types of women who I would like to deal with and the types that I wouldn't. I'll do the same thing with men as well. But my videos have been in an advice to men or my opinions that hopefully can influence somebody to change their perspective, you know? Not for the worse, but for the better, you know? And looking at Javon Boykin, you had everything in front of you, dude, everything, and you ruined it because you could not control your emotions. You don't, you have a bunch of yes people around you, okay? I'm not saying that his girlfriend is perfect. You know, this chick ran her car into the side of a club, injuring people, okay? So we know that she herself had probably has issues controlling her emotions. She could have put her hands on him. I doubt that she just didn't do anything and he just started hitting on her all of a sudden. But you cannot allow a woman to take you there. You cannot allow a woman to put you in a position to ruin everything that you've worked hard for. Trevon Boykin worked hard for where he is, and it's pretty much gone like that because he could not control his emotions. And if there are people out there, okay, who bring out the worst in you, you have to separate yourself from that. You have to separate yourself from that. Now, I know that he's been dating this particular female, um, <clears throat> Her name is uh, Shabrika, ba uh, ba uh, Shabrika Bailey is her name, okay? He's been dating her since high school. And maybe he felt some type of obligation to bring her along with him. But, dude, if the relationship is toxic, you might want to walk away. Because the one person who's going to lose in this entire situation is going to be you. So, so let me know something in the comment section below. And uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below.